Well, I'm really, really pleased to tell you guys this morning, we have Joan Kostenbader here, and she's from the Mel Fisher Museum over in Sebastian. She's absolutely going to tell you about the museum. She brought artifacts. She brought treasure. I am really excited to have her here, and I'm not going to take up the mic anymore. Joan, thank you for coming, and here she is. Okay, I, uh, thanks a lot for having me, people. I'm really uh, always happy to talk about the Treasure Museum, and I've been doing it for a number of years now. Uh, the story of Kip Wagner, the first gentleman that found coins on the beach. Uh, there in Sebastian, folks had lived for many years, and they were mainly fishermen and farmers. And when Kip moved there from Ohio, he was a contractor. And he did uh, hunt coins on the beach, and he did find coins on the beach, but the local folks who lived there for a long time uh, said, some of them, that there were sunken ships, and other people said it was buried on the beach. And so no one really knew the real story until Kip took his surfboard, he cut a hole in the front of it, he put a window pane in that hole, and he paddled out across the waves looking down through that glass. And when he saw cannons on the bottom, he obviously believed the story that there were shipwrecks, and that led to further study about where uh, these shipwrecks might be. Uh, to date, we found about six sites of shipwrecks, uh, don't think that you're going to find uh, a ship on the bottom. You know, pretty much all the cannons have been brought up. There might be uh, piles of ballast stone there, this type of thing, usually in a pile, certainly a foreign looking thing when you're looking at a sandy bottom. And uh, that's where the divers start to look. So we found six piles like that, and there were 12 ships. One got away, one was further north, it was up beyond Cape Canaveral, and so it wasn't trapped between the Bahamas and the Florida coast, so it was able to get out to sea. The remaining ships, 11, are somewhere there on the bottom yet, and they well may have uh, Elizabeth Farnese's jewels on them. This is called uh, Venera jewelry. And uh, we didn't really know what it was in the beginning until some lady came and told us that she had seen this very type of jewelry in the British Museum. At first we thought that big hole in the center of that round piece was for a gemstone, but she's the one that told us that it would be a painting. And each one of those earrings has 56 diamonds in it, and I held one of them in my hand, and I'll tell you I would never put it in my ear or my ear lobes would be on my shoulders. Uh, these pieces had nothing on the back. They're absolutely flat in the back. They were going back to Spain to have uh, either bales to hang or pins on it. And uh, the diamonds are flat cut diamonds. When you look at this jewelry in the case, it looks like it's set with glass because they, they didn't understand cutting diamonds for depth of reflection. They just cut the backs off and put them in metal and they look just like glass. They're uh, slightly brown diamonds. Now this is called a split shot. Okay, so this was a wire that hooked the two halves of this musket ball together. It would have been bent. Okay, and then you would have loaded it into the musket and you would have shot it out and then its velocity would have made it split and instead of a little hole like that in you, it would have been a big hole like that. So wonderful ways they devised to kill people. I never ceased to be amazed. Uh, this is part of a 10-pound cannonball. If, I, if it was whole, I couldn't begin to hold it in one hand, really, because it's, it's probably more than 10 pounds, very heavy. It's only part of one because somebody tried to hold it in one hand and dropped it. So this is a lighter weight one, and it actually is part of a grenade. Okay, so you can see a little piece of wood in there. And what they did with these grenades they took, there's a hole inside of this, and they filled it with black powder, and then they drove a wooden spike inside of it. Okay, so now the ships are coming side by side as they're trying to overtake the treasure ship, and they light the wooden plug, start it on fire, and then they hold this, and then they toss it on the other ship as they try to get it down the hold so it explodes below the water line. But there's a couple problems. If you throw it, well, number one, none of the wood is identical, so you don't really know how long it's going to burn before it gets down to the powder. 
So if you throw it over too soon, they throw it back at you. And if you throw it over too late, you're wearing a hook. <laughs> so these could be very effective, but um, they could be very deadly. When we first started finding treasure, there were so many silver coins that the floor of the bank in Vero Beach was covered with them, and the men used to rake them up with lawn rakes. Now, those days are long gone. I mean, realize they were more than 50 years ago, but we're still finding treasure.